Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to service this morning. It's a lovely sunny day out today, and we're so glad that you actually ha have joined us this morning. If this is your first time with us, in front of you, you'll see a little yellow card. It's a Let's Connect card. We'd like for you, whether you've been here the first time or this is your 101st time, we'd like for you to, anything that you want our church family to know about, we'd like for you to fill that out and just drop it in the box as you leave. Um, Reverend Barbara Durling is, is um, bringing the message this morning. I'm a little worried. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen her just yet, so I hope that she'll... <laughs> We may, we may have to sing an awful lot, and, and, and I don't feel much like singing an awful lot today, Jerry. <laughs> if I could, I would. Anyway, um, I forgot to say, my name is Peter Maxner, and uh, I'm chairman of the leadership board here at Windsor Baptist, and we are very thankful that you're here with us this morning. Pastor Rob is on vacation, so, uh, has taken the week off for March break, so while the cat's away, the mice will play. <laughs> anyway, our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we gather here this morning. We just thank you so very much for your wondrous love, your unshakable love that's true and real to all of us. Father, we pray for Pastor Rob and his family. We pray for refreshment and renewed uh, vigor for him and his family. And we pray for those who are unable to be with us this morning. We especially pray for our wonderful pianist, Dale McKenzie, we pray that you will just heal her and bring her back to good health again. Bless us now, Lord, as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Scott, you can all stand. We'll start it. I say this every week, but if you want to clap, if you want to raise your hands, Go ahead and do it. You're in the house of God. And we're only bringing honor and glory to him, not to ourselves, just to you. My life is in you, Lord, and my strength is in you, Lord, and my hope is in you, Lord, it's in you. Is in you, Lord, and my hope is in you, Lord, it's in you, it's in you, and I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength, oh, yes, with all of my life, and with all.
So if there are any children, anybody would like to, I probably will be one of the children that will go, uh, <laughs> to Discovery, we have a, a program, not going to do anything, no, okay. And Pastor Barbara Derling, she showed up, which is great, because then you won't have to hear me, <laughs> now you won't have to hear Jerry and I sing a lot. <laughs> so now I'm going to ask Larry Mansfield to come and Read the scripture for us this morning, please. The scripture this morning is taken from Second Peter, uh, uh, chapter one, verses one to eleven. Uh, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained life precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
according as his divine power has given us, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto an exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren give diligence to, to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God add his blessing to his holy word. Lots of noises going, cracks and pops up here. So We're going to sing It Is No Secret, and Evangeline gave me some music, and this song was, is a beautiful song. In fact, uh, after I accepted the Lord one morning, I was going in one direction, and when I received Jesus in my heart, he just threw me around and took me the other way. And uh, one of the first songs I ever heard was this particular song, and I heard it on TV at a Billy Graham crusade, and it's called It Is No Secret. And, uh, and the way I heard it was a little faster, so it might be a little faster for you. But the words are there, and they are the same. The chimes of time ring out the news another day. Oh, 
One of the wonderful things that we have as a privilege here is we have the opportunity to have such a great worship team, but we also have the privilege of having uh, retired pastors in our area. And Barbara Durling, Reverend Barbara Durling, has been with us for a number of years, and she has brought messages to us a couple of times, so we're really looking forward to her message this morning. Come on up, Barbara, and I'll play for you, and you can... Uh, we were a little worried this morning. We didn't see. I thought Jerry and I were going. <coughs> Jerry and I were going to have to sing a little more. And, and <coughs> you wouldn't preach. What? No. Well, you never there, know. There you wouldn't, better get there wouldn't be anybody. Wouldn't case. be anybody stay if I oh, did that. No. <laughs> Who wants to? <laughs> no, <laughs> not preach. me. No, thanks. <laughs> Let's pray. Oh. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity this morning. May the words that come from Reverend Barbara's mouth be your words. May her thoughts bring your words to her. And may she be blessed and bring the message to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've been this probably even more nervous than Peter many, many times in my life. But uh, there came a time when, I, when I, I was reading from, as I've shared before, uh, from Mary's words about Jesus when he turned the water into wine. And she said to the servant, whatsoever he saith to you, do it. And that's for all of us. We hear his voice, you know, and usually uh, what he asks us is scary. 
you know? And it seems like, oh, I don't want to do that, Lord. But as we step out, we'll, he'll take us to places we never dreamed, dreamed we would in, in knowing him better and loving him more and having exciting experiences in life. So I encourage you and, uh, to, uh, you know, just obey the Lord's voice. And as, as, I, as I walked, well, I was a bit late because uh, first my printer wasn't working. And so I called John and went over, tried to get it, the sermon printed off there, and it wouldn't work. And Laird wasn't feeling good today. And I just think, oh, Lord. <laughs> but anyway, as I walked in here and in the building and heard that song, it is, how marvelous, how wonderful is is my Savior's love for me. And when I first heard that, I was just thrilled. And that is one of my theme songs. It really, really is. And then the song, It Is No Secret What God Can Do. That was one of my mother's favorite songs. And she would sing it and sing it. And one time, oh, I remember one time when I was in rebellion, and, and she came, and she, she didn't, there was no correction or anything. She just sat down and sang that song. And so at her funeral, I had an opportunity to preach, preach uh, the message of her, for her funeral. And afterwards, uh, the song was sung, It Is No Secret What God Can Do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. There's, there's no limit <laughs> like that. His grace has no limit. His love has no measure. His power has no boundaries known unto man. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. And I have found that to be so true. Whatever we're going through, be encouraged. Rise up abo above it and glorify our wonderful, wonderful Lord. Recently, as I was reading the Bible, I noticed that, that God has made a lot of promises in the Bible, and, and I thought, that could be a sermon. And it wasn't too long afterwards, Pastor Rob called me and asked me if I'd like to preach. And so I said, yes, you know, and I told him what happened. And, and then Pastor Rob came to the Manning a couple weeks ago and um, preached there. And his message was, uh, was on the promises of God as well, an encouraging message for all of us there. And as I was doing research, I noticed that Max Lucado, is it Max Lucado or Lucado? <laughs> He has a Bible study called Unshakable Hope, Building Our Lives on the Promises of God. He said that there are over 8,000 promises of God in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. Another person wrote down promises he found in a book, and he found over 30,000 promises of God, of God in the Bible. How many of you like to do crossword puzzles? <laughs> Quite a lot. Uh, at, at last, the last puzzle that was done uh, on a table at the Manning, I noticed it was taking quite a while, while to complete. And some of them, it, they're harder than others, isn't it? And it's, it's kind of like with the Bible. The Bible is a, pu a puzzle to a lot of people. They can't, can't understand it. It doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, but it really doesn't until, until we know the author, until we've opened our heart to the Lord Jesus and invited him to come in. And then his Holy Spirit enlightens those, those words for us. Uh, um, the author of Hebrews says, the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. God's promises are powerful. I was surprised last week when Pastor Rob said there were over 11,000 people living here in Windsor, but only about 600 people attending church. Isn't that sad? We have... Uh, uh, we, we have... 
a mission field right here in Windsor, don't we? Amen. All around us, there are a people, and my heart goes out to children and young people who aren't going to Sunday school anymore. But we're, we probably, uh, most of us are here because we went to Sunday school. We went to church when we were young. But it's not too late for them. And uh, as believers, we have the best news in all the world to share with, with others. How many of you went to see the Revolution movie? Mm, quite a lot. There, in, in Halifax, uh, I know of, of a couple of men who were saved in, and trans, and they were hippies. And they were saved in that, um, in that revival in Vancouver. And, and they've been pastors of a church for many years in Halifax. One of our daughters attends that ch their church. And let to, so let's look at, we're going to look at the significance of God's great and precious promises in the Bible starting at the beginning. God's pro first promise is found in chapter 3. The, well, the serpent had deceived Eve when he, he asked, did God indeed say? And that's a question that the devil will ask us too. Did God say you shall not, whatever? And say, you, you'll be okay, you can do it, just try it, it you know, won't hurt you. And it can certainly lead into terrible traps, can't it? That happens over and over and over. And, he, and, Eve's, and Eve added to the devil's words when, when she said, yes, God told us not to eat it, to eat it and not to touch it. That was adding to, to God's word. And so Eve put doubts and a desire in her mind uh, to eat that forbidden fruit. And as a result, Eve, Eve fell for it. Adam joined her. And that was the beginning of chaos and dysfunction sorrow and death that came into the world. And that's the same pattern that's going on all around the world today, here in Canada and, and everywhere there are people. The, the, uh, the, uh, the behind all this chaos is the devil who hates God and he hates people. And so God's first promise is found in Genesis 3.15 when God told the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. God said there would always be a battle between the devil and God and God's people, between good and evil because of that. They, would, they knew the knew good and evil, but God said, but God promised a redeemer, as he said, the seed of the woman will crush your head. The seed of the woman, who, Jesus Christ, who would bring forth victory over sin and death through the Virgin Mary. And so the path, eventually, the, this, so this pattern of continues. God had to, to uh, destroy the world with a flood uh, in the days of Noah, and, the, and only Noah and his family were saved. And then afterwards, uh, through Noah's descendants, through one of his sons, um, Abraham was born, and, and Abraham grew up in, in a wild place as well. And God called him to, to leave his homeland, to leave his parents, and to go to a land that God would show him, this special land. And God told him that, that, that he made this promise, and he said, I will bless you and make your name great, and, 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 and you shall be, a, and through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so the blessing came through his son Isaac, born miraculously when Abraham and Sarah were too old to have children. An important chapter is chapter 22 that I'd encourage you to read when God told, 
told Abraham to take his son, his only son, and go up to Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. And can you imagine how he must have felt? You know how Abraham felt? For years, I didn't re it didn't really sink in, in to me that Abraham knew or believe, he, he believed that, that um, God would, re if, if he had to, to sacrifice uh, Isaac, that God would raise him from the dead because God made that promise that through, through Isaac, all the, that would be part of his blessing over the whole world. world. It would run on that line through, through Isaac. So Isaac could not remain dead if, if that was <laughs> so God, uh, Abraham knew that God would keep his promise, his great and, and glorious promise. And, and Jesus Christ, the son of David, came from that line. And he, he, is the, he is the one who, as in Isaiah 53 says, he was led as a sleep, sheep to the slaughter, and, and as a lamb before its shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and, and, and he gave his life to, to die for the sins of the world. And as, as, as Easter is coming up, and the, the time to to be focused upon Jesus' death and resurrection. We can remember all these things of God's plan that was from the foundation of the world. This was his plan, that the Son of God, his only Son, would be sacrificed for our sins, that we might be with him forever. And so these all these long genealogies that seem, seem to keep popping up and that seem so boring in the Bible, they are just keep on pointing to Jesus and pointing to Jesus, you know, in the New Test, Old Testament and the New. And so when we read them, it's, they're, not, they're not so boring. And they have some little, they have some little, um, little treasures in them too, especially I think it's in... Uh, it's in Luke, I think, or Matthew. And so when we receive Jesus, he, he wants, wants us to, um, to keep his precious promises and, and receiving them and, and sharing them with others. And so I had another experience just before my dad died, uh, he was dying in the hospital, I, I flew from from. from to, no, to Winnipeg, and then after my dad died, I went to be with my mother in, in uh, northwestern Ontario, Sioux Narrows, uh, where, we, where we grew up. And one beautiful, warm afternoon in March 1999, it was, I, when my mother was sleeping, I went to my favorite, favorite spot, which it was uh, up on a, a high hill uh, in the... And it's, a, it's a, the Canadian Shield, so it's a rocky and wind, windswept trees and overlooking Lake of the Woods and, and islands. And, and it's such a special spot where I'd played there as a child. And after surrendering my life to Jesus at 20, I often went there to pray and seek the Lord. And, and that afternoon, as I was praying and singing, I heard a whisper just as just a very, almost like a very quiet whisper, and that whisper was, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And I thought, what does that mean, Lord? And this message today is, it really is, uh, it's connected with this, that as we share the, the gospel, even if we're nervous or whatever, it's going, it's going out to other places, you know, and there's all kinds of nations that live here in Canada the, and, and, and all around the world. Our, our website can be seen by people, and so each time, whatever we do, we're, we can be sharing, we, we can be uh, letting our light shine and, and, and uh, 
blessing others. And, and as we do, we're a blessing, and God is blessed as well, that, that, that his, his truth, his, his, his precious gospel is going forth. And, and I believe that is the call of every believer. God wants people in this world to know that Christ died for the sins of the whole world, and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life, and will be welcomed into the kingdom of God. And one morning in March 2003, I, I woke up... Uh, I woke up thinking about how I, I had gone to Acadia to that uh, invitation for, for pastors, a two-day invitation. A and uh, I was lying in bed, and I thought about it, and I thought, I, I shouldn't go today because Laird would get so, di so disturbed. He didn't, he didn't like to see me studying so much. And uh, I thought, I'm not going back. I really liked everything I seen and heard, but I'm not going back today. And immediately, I, I heard the Lord in that still small voice again say, this is the time for which you have been born. I want you to go. And so uh, down at the breakfast table and, and saying to Laird, um, God has called me to, to go to, to the university, to Acadia, Trinity College. And I cried as I, as I said it because I knew how much it bothered him bothered him, but I had to obey the Lord. I think I may have told you before this. And at the Divinity College, I had the privilege to have fellowship with Christian leaders from all over the world. And when I was a little girl, uh, I, my, my family and I, we didn't have much, and I felt like I was, I, I was one of the most stupid and, and lowest of all people, you know. And we had American, American children who had come up, and they seemed to have so much confidence. And, you know, but, but God's hand was, was upon, upon us. And so if, you, if you've been struggling with things, too, and feeling really inferior, well, that's a good sign, because when, when we're weak, then the Bible says we are strong through Jesus Christ our Lord. So whenever he, whatever he says to you, if you hear his, his voice speaking to you, do it. Do what he asks. He needs people who, who will just step up. And, and even if we're scared to death, just, just be obedient because he needs a people. He needs his people to, uh, to honor him and obey him. And then when I became a pastor at Canaan, one of the songs we sang was from the hippie revival. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around are, are warmed up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once we've experienced it, we want to sing its precious spring. We want to pass it on. So let's pass on, on the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let, let, and let our faces be glowing with his, with his love. And remember in Luke 24, 49, Jesus told his disciples before he left, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but wait in Jerusalem until you are filled with power from on high. You, we need the power of God be, be, uh, to, so that we can be witnesses. Uh, and he said, Behold, I send the promise. Yes. In Acts 1.8, Jesus had promised them, you, you wait in Jerusalem. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And we can be witnesses to the ends of the earth through the computer, through all the technology that's available now. And just think, uh, think of that. There, there uh, that day uh, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, there was 120 people, and look, and look at the, the, well, I guess it's around 2 billion Christians that started from, from that power of the Holy Spirit coming upon those 122 believers that day. 
The place was shaken, tongues of fire rested on them. They spoke in other languages. Keep people came from all over the place. And pre Peter preached a powerful invitation to to, for them to repent and turn to Jesus Christ. And that day, 3,000 people believed and were baptized. And remember how ashamed that Peter had been before that when, when, he, when Jesus was arrested. Peter denied Jesus, uh, that he even knew Jesus. Three times he kept saying, no, no, no. And he was so ashamed after that. But when Jesus rose from the dead and, his, and, and he gave the instructions to, that to go tell my disciples I've risen and, and tell Peter, he added as well. So whatever we've done, Jesus understands and he has compassion and patience for us. We don't have, have to hold on to shame or, or anything like that. We're just so freely welcomed and loved. And, and, as, and then because we're so human, because we do fail, because, because of all of that, we can re relate to others. And others can, can understand, too, that we, nobody is perfect, and we all have our struggles, so, so that we can just be ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit, saying the words that the Lord gives us to say. And the <coughs> God... The church has continued to grow. God's promised Son and God's promised Holy Spirit continue to transform lives. And as Jesus says, come unto me. Whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He welcomes all. Can you picture this place enlarged with this back part taken out so that as it's designed to do, so that the, because Enlarged because it's too, too small to hold all the people who come to worship with us. As I was, I was uh, writing, writing this last part, uh, Laird had just finished reading Psalm 79, and he spoke out from the last verse, Show forth your praise to all generations. <laughs> the verse says, so we, your people, are the sheep of your pasture. We will give thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Can we say that too? We, so we, your people, are the sheep of your pasture. How about saying that? So we, your people, are the sheep of your pasture. We will give thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. You heard that, Lord. <laughs> that is our high calling and our privilege to share the good news. Each one of you have a story to tell of God's amazing grace, his amazing deliverance, and all kinds of blessings, all kinds of good things that he has done for you. So let's just be, get prepared to, to be shaken, get prepared to be stretched, and and, and living a life that's, that's a glorious life of, of uh, freedom and, and joy. And what greater joy is there than this relationship with Jesus Christ and seeing people come to know of him, seeing them set free. It's our high calling and our privilege to share the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. We have lots of opportunities as we're shopping or wherever we are, listening and obeying what God wants us to do. And I think as I might have already quoted, all the promises of God in Christ, are, Christ Jesus are yes and amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who established us with you is Christ and has anointed us in, in is and who has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. We can trust the Lord to empower and lead us, and He wants us to trust and obey Him. 
As believers, we have the assurance that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all the promises of God throughout the whole Bible from the beginning to the end. And the Holy Spirit gives us a desire not to be lukewarm but on fire for God. And in Acts 17, 6, when Paul and Silas were preaching, many people became believers. But those who rejected the, the gospel said, those who have turned the world upside down uh, have come here too. Those who have turned the world upside down, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, raising the dead, and, and uh, preaching the good news. Uh, They've turned the world upside down. Let's turn, we could turn the world upside down too, couldn't we? <laughs> Filled with the Spirit, if that's how the Lord leads us. Um, my first sermon over at the old church was on the revival that was started through Hen Henry Alain, or Henry Allen, who grew up in Falmouth and preached throughout Nova Scotia and parts of New Brunswick. It was, it, was, it was said that he was like a flame sweeping through Nova Scotia. <laughs> and that the, the prayer meetings here at the church are really powerful prayer, prayer meetings. And we just pour our hearts out to the Lord, praying for whatever you know, is on our hearts, praying for our church, pray, praying and praying. And, and, and God hears our prayers. He hears our cries. So Let's be expecting good things. Uh, there are so many people who need, need to know the Lord. And, John, and in John, Jesus said, for those who, who receive Jesus, he, he gives them the right to become children of God, even to those who believe on his name. A new start, a new beginning of trusting in the promises of God. And living at the Manning um, gives us many opportunities, as there was over 100 people there. And one morning, as I was taking my clothes to the laundry, I was told that, that a woman had fallen in her apartment. So I, I went, went there, and I found her crumpled on the kitchen floor, and, and she, her, she, uh, she was, was leaning awkwardly on a, on a stand, and her foot was twisted, and... Her, her watch was connected so that it, it would uh, alert the ambulance, and she was waiting for that, the, for the ambulance. And I think it must have been about 45 minutes before the ambulance came as she was there on the floor. So I, I got down on the floor beside her and talked and prayed with her. And in that time, the Lord reminded me of many of his promises from the Bible, and I shared them with her assuring her that regardless of her circumstances, regardless of what she was going to face, no matter how hard it might seem, God would be with her. I never saw her again. The ambulance took her, and, and she passed away a, a week or so later in the hospital. Her best friend has... Her best friend has told me several times since then how much it meant to this precious little lady to have me there beside her that day. Just, and, that's, and that's how the spirit moves. We might be just thinking, I'm going to wash clothes, but God has other plans. And whatever those plans are, we can interrupt them if, if the Lord is leading us to reach out and, and touch someone who needs our help. That is so important to obey the, obey the, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Our time on earth is short. Jesus promised he's going to return soon. And my mother used to say, Jesus says, I'm coming soon. <laughs> As a little girl. The last verse in the Bible says, in Revelation 22, is a promise from Jesus. He, he, the second last verse, uh, surely I come quickly, which means immediately, shortly, or hastily. Let's believe his promises. Let's be ready to love and help others. Let's be ready to go to meet him. We don't, let's not miss God's best. 
instead of dying, we, we could be caught up to meet him in the air and be with him forever that way. And I wonder today if there's anyone here who really does not trust God's promises or know them, I want you to know God loves you very, very much. Perhaps you've been wounded and, or, by, or disappointed by Christians or feel that you failed God too much and it's too late. Maybe you think God could never love you, but God proved his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly, and that's every one of us. Isn't that wonderful that we, we have forgiveness and we have a, an abundant living in Jesus Christ? Let's all thank him and believe, uh, believe all his great and precious promises in Jesus' name. Amen. We can all stand. And because of Jesus' work at the cross and the blood he shed for us, we are no longer slaves. We don't have to be a slave to sin anymore. We're still sinners. We can trust in his name. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. And of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears. few announcements this morning. You can see on the overhead. One I want to emphasize is 
Uh, Finance Committee meets tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock, and uh, we're going to close with an unusual benediction. Jerry, I want you to do, we're going to all sing together, Jesus loves me because of the fact that he does love us so much, each and every one of us, whether we're a, ch a young child or whether we're an old guy like me, Jesus loves me. Ready, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to Have a really blessed week this week. There are refreshments in the welcoming room. We invite you to stay and chat and have some refreshments with us. God bless you.